السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أهلا وسهلا welcome guys welcome guys to my YouTube channel my name is Roots of Knowledge my name is Roots of Knowledge my name is Yaqad Zaman and this is my channel which is, which I named Roots of Knowledge All right so welcome أهلا وسهلا I hope you guys are having a fantastic day it's very cold in the UK today Probably will snow tonight as well. They're saying it's probably unless it's snowing outside now, but that's uh, basically what you have. All right, just testing that out there. Okay, so welcome everybody to Saturday, and Saturdays we we go through answering some of your questions that you guys might have, inshallah. And if I don't know the answer, then unfortunately I don't know the answer. But if I do know the answer, then inshallah I will try to answer it as best as I can. All right, so. Wa alaikum as salam. Amina, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan. Welcome, welcome, mashallah. Abu Bakr, wa alaikum as salam. NS, wa alaikum as salam. Allah wa barakatuh. Ama, wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan, my brother. Ibi, wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan. Ahla wa sahla and welcome, welcome. As you can see, I'm wrapped up nice and warm. All my buttons are actually also I've only got one left, but I need that one. Nice and warm, wrapped up. Today is a freezing day. Today I was doing a lot of DIY. As you can see, my hands, DIY hands, all covered with this kind of glue and things. We've been trying to fix holes. Yeah, trying to stop the draft from coming in. So I go on Instagram. So, I like a DIY. I enjoy DIY a lot. Only problem is, is uh, I'm not too good at it. I mean, if I do it a few times, then I get good at it. But the first time I do something I haven't done before, you know, you just YouTube it, figure out how to do it, and then you give it a go. So, I gave you a go. Today I was using foam spray. So, if you know what foam spray is, it's basically where you have like small cracks or holes in walls and things. And then use the foam spray to fill fill those gaps in. So that's quite fun days, but you gotta be careful, it's a bit toxic as well. What's the meaning of life, my brother? What is that's a very good question? That is, what is the meaning of life? Tell us about why you called your channel Roots of Knowledge. Roots of Knowledge, um, it's because I was just thinking to myself, um, there's a lot of knowledge out there, but there's certain types of knowledge which are considered to be the core aspects of knowledge the roots of the knowledge meaning from the roots grow all the plants if the roots are correct if you have the right roots and right foundations and right circumstances then the rest of it's going to be good what do you guys think the are you a cowboy builder yes my brother i'm a cowboy builder cowboy now i know what it feels like when people are like cowboy cowboy you know Mujtahids, cowboy trying to do fiqh and cowboy trying to do hadith and cowboy trying to do tafsir. I have heard hadith about raising hands in salah when going up and for ruku. Should Hanafis do this? It follows the idea of rejecting position in a madhab if you find a proof for going against it. Um, so the idea is that the Hanafis, they say that the, that the raising of the hands before and after ruku is actually done by many sahaba. They don't deny that. They know it's done. The problem is, is that they found most of the Sahaba didn't, didn't used to do it. So this seems to have been a practice that was done in the beginning of Islam and then later on it was actually stopped. So this is why they say the safest position is actually not to do it. You know, because many of the senior Sahaba actually stopped doing it. So this is why uh, they consider this to be an act that was done in the beginning of Islam. So the safer position would be for a person not to do it. That's the idea. If a person did do it, it would not affect their salat. But it wouldn't be considered to be the best because this is what the Hanafis found in the early. Remember, the Hanafis were, Abu Hanif was in the era of the ending era of the Sahaba. So you're basically going to the mosque five times a day and you're seeing the children of Sahaba in the mosque and maybe some Sahaba and they're not doing it. If a person has flat feet flat in sajda, Okay, a priori, ahlam wa sahlan, alaykum as salam. Please, could I ask a tajweed question? Yes, you can. 
ما شاء الله سعيد اهلا وسهلا ما شاء الله long time my cousin brother really busy haven't been able to watch your streams hope as a zak la khair is my cousin said remember guys make sure you make dua for my cousin said may allah give him uh, good health may allah give him barakah in his, his in his trading and his uh, time and efforts zak la khair said means a lot bro means a lot hope everything's good on your side long time you have a met in real life as well <laughs> Do you know anything about the discourse between Mufti Zahid al kawthari and Sheikh al muallimi So there were many things between them, but I think the main issue was a book that was written by Sheikh Zahid al kawthari called Ta'nib al-Khatib. So Ta'nib al-Khatib was basically, Khatib al-Baghdadi has written a book called Tariq al-Baghdad. And in there he has a section which talks about Imam Abu Hanifa. And he brings praise and he brings a lot of criticism, historical like reports. He doesn't criticize Abu Hanifa, but he brings reports about people who criticize Abu Hanifa. Um, so he wrote this, this book, you know, pointing out the problems in Tariq al-Baghdad. Then came along Muallimi and then Muallimi did a rebuttal against Ta'nib al-Khatib. He wrote a book called Tenkil, and then he went back and forth, really. In Switzerland, yeah, mashallah. So you're not missing, don't worry, bro. You're not missing any weather. The weather's the same here as Switzerland. Stay safe, bro. Uh, start my understanding of raising in the hands. Ahlan wa sahlan. You're welcome, brother. Tayyib, ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Wa alaikum as salam. If a person has his feet resting, has his feet resting flat in sajda. Such that the soles are towards the ceiling and the nails are on the ground is yes, as long as the feet are touching the ground is fine, right? In Surah Baqarah it says, And we blessed Isa with Holy Spirit when the Quran reference the Holy Spirit. What is meant by this same? So according to majority of us, it refers to Jibreel alayhi salam. So Jibreel alayhi salam, Ruhul Qudus. This is most likely referring to Jibreel A.S. So Jibreel A.S. supported him throughout his, his mission. In Switzerland, whether it's worse here, we'll send pics. Yeah, bro. That's it. Don't worry. Send the pics, but don't worry. We're not missing anything. We are in minus two, minus three degrees anyway. But send the pics as well. Uh, was the Prophet Sallallahu infallible? This extends more broadly to all Prophets. Uh, yes, so all Prophets, no Prophet would ever make a sin. So if you mean by infallible in the sense that they would never sin, no Prophets were sin. They were all protected from committing sins. Yes, they made mistakes, errors, but they wouldn't do a act of disobedience to Allah. That's what sin means. Uh, some people raise their criticism that how is it possible to have so much difference of opinion regarding how salah is meant to be performed when Rasulullah did it five times a day in Jamaat. Yeah, definitely. The the issue is not how the Prophet Sallallahu used to pray per se. The issue is more to do with um, how we deal with evidence. That's that's the issue. Yeah. So, in other words, um, like for example, imagine. The Prophet Sallallahu he prays Salat in the Masjid five times a day, okay? And he's been doing this for, let's say, 23 years of his life. Passes away now. Now, Sahaba, obviously, they don't... We have no record of Sahaba doing, like, major differences in Salat. It was as though the Sahaba prayed Salat so often that they didn't see there to be a need to actually mention any differences. Because, like, when something is so obvious, people don't see the need of recording it. It was only when the people came after them that people started to differ. How do we deal with evidence now? So imagine you're going to the mosque and you're seeing how people pray. And then you're saying, I'm satisfied with how they pray. And any reports that I find that the Prophet Sallallahu did this in Salat or did this in Salat, if it goes, if the people are going against this, then I will take what the people are saying because they were the closest people to the Prophet Sallallahu and their Salat isn't really going to become that distorted over the years. So that's what the Hanafis and the Malikis did. Shafi Rahimullah came along and others and they started to say, what are we going to do with those reports that reach us about his Salat, which we don't find in the mosques people doing? So they'll say, we're going to act upon those now. So this ikhtilaf only really started to, to turn up 
like that. That's when people decided to take the ikhtilafs seriously. Is the feet, uh, if the feet are lifted in such that such that no toes are touching, is it correct? Such that, so if they if the feet are above, both feet are above the ground without touching the ground for the entire duration of sajda, just the knees are, then the sajda would not be done according to Hanafis. Then that sajda must be redone again. And if it's not redone, then the salat would have to be redone. Do you have a reliable source I could turn to read or watch, learn about the stories of the prophets in Islam? Yeah, so I would say, I don't know about videos, but there's actually a good book called Stories of the Quran by Mawlana Hibzur Rahman. Mawlana Hibzur Rahman. It's translated into English now as well. Mawlana Hibzur Rahman. It's a two volume book. I think I've got it somewhere. Yeah, somewhere it's around here. I can't remember where I put it. It's a two volume book. Yeah, that would be, that's probably one of the most easiest to follow. Spend wa alaikum as salam. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I hope you're well, my brother. Irfan wa alaikum as salam. Ahlan wa sahlan. You're well as well, my brother. Irfan. Umar, uh, if I travel to London and stay there, do I need to pray the full salah? No. So you, it depends where you're traveling from. But if you're traveling from outside of about 48 miles, then you are musafir, inshallah. Pray the saf the safar salat, which is two rakats basically. Um, in the Quran, when a word starts with Hamza Wasal, we look at the vowel of the third letter of the word to know what vowel to pronounce the Hamza Wasal. Then the third letter has a fatha or a kasra. We pronounce the Hamza Wasal or kasra. I've noticed the pattern of fatha and kasra often being paired to cer for certain rules in Quranic Arabic. Uh, is there a reason for this? I can give more examples. Yeah, so this is basically a sarf rule. So in sarf, this is basically how an amr is made, or um, usually so an amr. So it's hamza wasals are usually in amrs. So that's basically how it's done. So it's just for pronunciation purposes. That's what these Arabs had designed for themselves, for ease of pronunciation. They had designed. So that's how we we we, we pronounce it. Uh, a lot of these tajweed rules are a lot of them are for ease of pronunciation and to make it flow proper. Real basic alaikum. So how can I advise my best friend since she's in haram relationship with a guy, even though he seems to have good intentions, etc. I don't want to ruin our friendship. Um I mean, I don't know if she's practicing or not. What I would suggest is is try to maybe maybe speak to her about it on a serious level. Yeah, so if she's practicing or not, maybe slowly, slowly speak to her about it on a serious level. And that way, what can happen is slowly you might be able to get through to her. Otherwise, she might become very defensive. And just say, look, I, I just want the best for you. I think that would be the best best thing. If, you, if she's really your friend, she's going to listen to you. And, and once you've advised her, that's it. You've advised her. People are shaking hands with the opposite gender is not allowed. Is this true? Yes. If so, any suggestion for how to explain to non-Muslim? I feel many would be offended. Uh, yeah, I think the thing is, when it comes to these kind of things of interaction, sometimes you have to be firm that, look, this is my belief, and that's it. You make people, you, we shouldn't feel inferior to people that we're scared of explaining our, our religion to people. If someone, like, for example, there's people out there who, um, like Jehovah's Witness, who have very strict beliefs and they, they are very clear about their beliefs. They're very proud of their beliefs. So I think it's important for Muslims not to feel as though they have to um, succumb to other people's desires and other people's norms. Yeah, I think that's the, I don't know if anyone else has got any. I think that's the most important thing that we have to inculcate in our youth that you, you, you have your belief and then you're firm on your belief. And you explain to people, this is my belief, be proud of it. Wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan, al mubarak. Please, how do we complete Salatul Isha when you miss one rakat? So, I've actually made a video on this al mubarak. If you go to my YouTube channel, I've actually made a video of how to make up rakats if you missed your rakats. Um, let me see if I can find the video and then I'll post it on here. Yeah, so it's one of my, the shorts videos.
There you go. Uh, Shakar Kurdi, Ahlan wa Sahlan, Alaikum wa Salam, Alaikum wa Salam, Shakar. Uh, Omar, if I miss Zuhur and Asr Salah and it's time for Maghrib, can I still pray Zuhur? Uh, yes, what you have to do is pray your Zuhur Qadha, pray your Asr Qadha, then pray your Maghrib. Should I study the Hifdur Rahman book about a story of the prophets with a teacher? Or you can read it on your own, inshallah. Isn't distance uh, to be Musafir is 77 kilometers, not 48 miles? Uh, yeah, 48 miles. I don't know what 48 miles is in kilometers. I'm not sure what 48 miles works out to be. Is it permissible to send salutations upon the Prophet if the main if the Imam says his name during khutbah? According to Hanafis, you must be silent in khutbah of everything. You cannot say a word in khutbah because of the Prophet's hadith. Saqib wa alaykum as salam, ahla wa sahla, my brother. Is it true that if a person said to his wife something and thought about divorce, does divorce count? No, it doesn't. They have to actually say divorce. Is it haram to receive blood transfusion from non-Muslims? No, it's not haram. Do you believe that you read it specifically for the Quran or is it uh, from Balagha to read the Hadith with Tajweed? No, it's from, for the Quran. So I'm starting to think about marriage. Do you mind describing the Islamic process for this? How can we get to know someone without spending time? So you basically ask your, if you've got female family members, you ask them to find people for you. Or if you're interested in someone, maybe you speak to their brother or their father, or you get someone else, some family member to go and speak to their family. That's, that's basically, in other words, the interaction should be in such a way that you're, you're, not, you're not sort of like conversing with someone about marriage on their own without anyone else. So that it doesn't lead to something haram. So how to not really know their character? I mean, you think about it. Did your parents and your grandparents and great-grandparents, did they ever know what they were getting themselves into? So you get to know, I mean, you ask family members, you find out from them. Maybe you look on their social media, you find out what kind of person they look like and how they behave. You, you will not know a person, even if a person has a boyfriend and girlfriend, you will not know exactly how they are until you obviously live with them for a very long time. And that is impractical as a Muslim. Yeah, that's impractical. So you kind of look at the main sort of things that you're interested in, in the woman. Maybe her looks, maybe her character, maybe like, for example, how does she deal with problems in life? There's actually, um, I think it's, is it um, pure matrimony? I think it's pure matrimony. They have a hundred questions on there that you you can possibly ask. Can we also say, I mean, during uh, khutbah, I was listening to one imam mention Gaza and the link. Yeah, so he's, he's, again, silence. Is it permissible for a woman on menses or a person in Janaba to be in close proximity to a person near death? Yes, you can. Some Hanafis say you can't, but there doesn't seem to be strong uh, inclination for this in the early Hanafis. No mention of this in the early Hanafis. Regarding missing one rakat of Salah Maghrib, then you will be sitting in each rakat, correct? So if you miss one rakat, you basically, yeah, so, if you, so, you, so I've actually done a video for this one as well. Yeah, so missed. Yeah, I've actually made one for Maghrib Salat as well. You guys can check that out. Missed Rakats in Maghrib. Uh, Okay, uh, next, Salu, alaikum salam, ahla wa sahla. nowadays finding a spouse is difficult, especially for women reaching the 30s, what do you recommend? I would say, I mean, see the problem with women, with men finding spouses and women is quite different. For men, um, men generally can find, even in their 40s, they can find spouses. It's just the way, the nature of how generally men tend to look for, for the opposite gender, whereas for women, uh, people show less interest in women uh, once they re they once they go past a certain age, right? So this is this is the issue. I would say generally that if a woman is interested in marriage, she should either speak to maybe look if she can have contact with the local imam or if she's studying at a particular institute, speak to the one of the teachers um, or something of that nature. Then maybe she speaks to them 
and then they look out for her. Um, I mean, I, uh, in fact, there was a, a lady who actually contacted me a while, while back about her daughter and actually found a guy uh, and they're in talks at the moment. This is one of my students and they're in talks at the moment going on. If it were, I said to them, look, if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, you carry on. The thing I think a lot of people are afraid of is um, what to do next. If I find someone, how do I approach them? How do I get someone to show interest that I'm interested without sounding strange? I think that's probably one that I don't know. What what would you guys say? What would you how would you guys what do women generally find difficult? I said don't follow that silence rule for the hood if the imam is so passionate. Uh, especially when she gets asked regularly why she does yeah, I think that's that's probably a difficult thing as well. That's uh, probably a difficult thing. So I would generally say just tr you, you unfortunately i mean sometimes what happens is the f the male members of a woman's family are not interested in looking for her they'll just you know brush it under the carpet ignore it ignore it ignore it until she's too too late for her so i think she has to take steps sometimes she has to ask male individuals in the community that she, maybe she knows if they can keep an eye out for her and anyone turns up maybe she can they can refer 48 miles is 48, should you? Um, <clears throat> there's a di yeah, there's a difference of opinion. Yeah, there's a difference of opinion regarding exactly how we convert 48, 48, should I, miles to. So some say it's 52, and some say it's actually less than that, more than that. Our expectations from a spouse are very different from our parents and grandparents. Yeah, I think we live in a world which is more ro romantic. You want romance and you want the husband to do all these things. Whereas our parents was like, you know what? As long as the guy seems like a decent guy from a decent family, that's enough. What's some sunnah things for Rukhsati and first night? Just, just be good. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa sahlan in Islam. I made some money from crypto that I saw uh, IFG, but it's recently come out that they had some hidden dealing with gambling company. I was using I was going to use the money for Umrah. Is it okay? Yeah. So long as at that time you knew and now now you stopped. Yeah, now that you stopped, then uh, that's fine. So stop from now on. If you know that there's they're dealing with gambling companies and stop from now on, whatever money you've made, just keep that. Mufti, could you approach a potential spouse in public just to ask the family contacts? Yes, you can. Also, what counts as khalwa? Do you have to have wali directly present listening to your conversation? You, you chaperone, basically you have someone that's not going to lead to uh, have, uh, ideally uh, the woman should have like a male individual so that you know that it's not going to lead to some inappropriate conversations. Would it be okay as a Hanafi to take the other madhab opinion just so I can eat some squid? I don't know, Allah Alam. From an Islamic perspective, I mean, generally with regards to seafoods, one of our teachers would say, look, if it's in a community that you're in and they generally eat it, then there would be scope for it. I personally would not eat it. But, I mean, that's up to you. Sometimes just because, just because, you know, it might it might be something you feel like eating. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you just, just give it up. From an Islamic perspective, what are the goals of marriage nowadays? It seems to be just being... The main thing about marriage is just procreation. That is the main point of all marriage. It's just creating a family and then preserving that family for Allah's sake. That is the main purpose of marriage. And obviously in there it's fulfilling your sexual desire in a halal way. That is the main, main purpose. And then obviously everything else is basically like imagine a house. The house is the walls and the roof and the and the, and the ground. That's that's a house that is. And then everything else that you want on top of that is just the decorations. So if you want romance in the marriage and if you want her to cook for you and her to dress up in a certain way for you or you want him to uh, be romantic to you in a certain way that you want or buy gifts for you or do these things and that's that's separate days. Uh, give some marriage tips. I don't know. Uh, so th see, the thing about marriage is this. The thing about marriage is marriage is basically like you're gonna live with a you're gonna live with your friend, 
and it's going to be a very long term relationship and it's you can't just back out easily so you got to kind of think about how you would deal with with problems it's a lot about problem solving problem solving and compromising yeah and working together i think those are probably those are probably the things that you have to look for the best things the best people to ask about marriage tips is the culture that you're from yeah the culture you're from the problem, I think, with the problem with a lot of Asian lads nowadays is the two they 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 are spoiled with their, by their moms too much. This is a big problem that we have. Asian lads are spoiled too much by their moms, and then when they get into a marriage, they're not used to that same sort of like um, comfort and uh, treatment, that, the special treatment that they used to get from their moms, and it just causes a clash. Um, and I don't know about ladies' side, maybe ladies would know better. Bridge to Eternity, wa alaikum as salam. I hope and trust you well. The stories of Arabian Nights, CG, Aladdin, Gulsan, are they based on? They're just all made up. Yeah, made up. I can see 16k likes. What? Nah, must be made up. Must be made up. Okay. In regards to usul fiqh, is a good definition for fard ma yumkinu tasih al aqad? Fard ma yumkinu tasih al aqad. For fard, no, no, that's not a definition of fard. I've witnessed people go on their phone or talk during khutbah. Do you think the hadith about keeping silent during khutbah is a well-known hadith? I happen to come across it. Yes. Yeah. Either. خرج الإمام فلا صلاة ولا كلام. Yeah, so I think imams should make their public aware of this. What do you think about these marriage events that certain masjids or restaurants hold in Greenway? I don't know. I've never been to them, so I wouldn't be able to comment on that. Are we supposed to value, adore, and admire the Prophet ﷺ more than our parents? Of course. Yes, definitely. How do you say miss your salat in Arabic? So you say fatatka salat, fatatka salat. Is dua accepted when Sheikh says Arabic speech? Then it sits for a few seconds. One opinion is that this is where dua is accepted. There's actually forty opinions. Mum Suyuti mentions of on Friday when the dua is accepted. Forty different opinions. One opinion is that. Okay, let's check out Curious Cat. Let's see what Curious Cat people are saying. Okay, I recently got scammed by a person claiming to be a Muslim who needed cash quickly to travel long distance to his mother who was getting an operation done on her soon. Later, I found out what happened to me was a common scam in the US, cash for gold scam. Basically, the person acted very wealthy and handed me a lot of jewelry in exchange for the money claiming he would pay me back in a few days. It's been weeks and now I'm left with jewellery that might well be fake. Can I go to an appraisal shop to see if the, the scammer said he wanted the jewellery shipped back to him and I'm sinful if I if I get it. No, no, get it. you can get it checked out. Get it valued. And if the person doesn't pay you back, then you can you can actually sell it and then take your money from there. And the rest of it is left as... Amana with you. Yes, you can. Okay, next. Person A has a urine incontinence. And after they urinate, they put on boxes briefs until it's time to make wudu. For any of the prayers, after praying in clean clothes, the clean briefs, they they put the box of breeze from before back on. They have drops of dried urine. Uh, when cleaning themselves before making wudu, do they need to put water on their private parts or should they also put it around the inner thighs? No need to. No need to do all that. Yeah, they don't have to do any of that. Uh, what if so? Just carry on. If they're, if they're incontinence, basically all that drops it will be forgiven for them, and they just have to repeat their wudu for every salat. 
and then maybe once a day just change the underwear that's sufficient uh, okay I'll seek some advice when I am a student of Ilham. Okay, so everyone will inevitably for so what was the question again? What if someone is trying to do more ibadah or righteous habits but recently gets more profound guilt after committing a sin behaving in a disrespectful way? Saying something true but disrespectful to parents or not helping someone when you could do so with some effort and self-restraint. I get more guilt nowadays. Is it a good sign Allah wants me to set myself a higher standard? Or is it just a normal human reaction after sinning? I don't remember feeling this amount of guilt so quickly after doing borderline sins compared to the past. What can I do to maintain myself higher standards? Uh, this is more of a human reaction to doing wrong. What I would suggest is alongside alongside asking Allah sincerely to forgive you would be to stay in the company of good people uh, yeah, stay in the company of good people. This is a very important. A lot of people don't realize why staying in the company of good people has such an impact on someone. The more you're a lonely person, the more lonely meaning that the more you stay on your own and you don't stay in the company of good people, the more shaitan plays on your mind. You start thinking, overthinking things too much. Your understanding of Islam becomes an imbalanced understanding of Islam. A lot of waswasa and a lot of these kind of things. So it's very company is very, very important. Never underestimate company, good company. Regularly being company, you're naturally your, 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 you know, your like barometer, barometer, if you want to call it, of iman is going to become, um, you know, balanced itself. Wa alaikum assalam. When I have been doing sajda sahaw, I have only been doing one sajda. Someone told me I actually supposed to do two sajdas for sajda sahaw. Every time I've been praying alone and needed to do sajda sahaw, I've done one sajda. When I pray behind the imam or someone else, I do two. I uh, don't know why I've been doing one. Do I need to repeat my past prayers? Okay, no need to repeat them. But from now on, you must do two. If someone is going overseas and the airport is inside the city, does he shorten his prayer? Yes. Okay, I prayed in Jamaat and the person next to me prayed using a Shia stone. Is it permissible to pray next to them? Yes. When women pray together in Jamaat, does the female stand at the front alone or does she stand in the middle of the the front line of the middle of the front line? Middle of the front line. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, we know that the dead can feel. No, we don't know the dead. No, that's not accurate. Uh, is it allowed to carry out human? So, dead do not feel when you touch them. So, I don't know, I mean, where people get this idea that the dead can actually feel if you touch them. Allah knows best. <clears throat> is dua accepted when Sheikh As per Hanafi, is he allowed to give kafara of an oath to one poor person in 10 days? Um, giving the price of grains or the grains themselves each day, like if it was 10. Yes, you can do that. I'm a med student. My mom wants me to marry a doctor to. Uh, how much weight should I put on my mother's preference? Personally, I'm not too. You don't have to listen to her in that. Yeah, you wouldn't have to. Yeah, character and Dean are the main things. Do you eat shrimp shake? Yes, I love them. How far do you go with istibra? If you if you do the preliminary stuff like jogging on spot, coughing, etc. Yeah, that's enough. Yeah, leave it at that. Sprinkle water and then ignore the rest of the feeling that you get. Especially if you're a person that suffers from like overthinking. <clears throat> Leave it.
so am I allowed to eat snails if going Morocco and stuff? I would say no. No, because the ikhtilaf of um the ikhtilaf of snails, I think it's just it's it's just, it's just a Maliki thing. I would say no, it's not not permitted. The reason why shrimps, I would say there's more scope for it is because there are many Hanafis who have actually permitted um you know eating these kind of things. So it's it's a safer, it's a safer bet to eat that. Because the 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 sea ikhtilaf is much more widespread than the the snail one. Because the Hanafis have a clear you know ruling regarding insects, very clear ruling. As for Hanafis, is allowed to give kafar an oath to one poor person ten days. I did that one. Whenever, whatever. Then, if you are, uh, if you are to, for example, give ten sa, then you can give one pound each day to one poor. Poor for ten days. Question. So, is it wajib to give the price to the poor without leaving a day? Uh, so you have to, you have to basically, you say you, if you give it on one the same day, then you're not doing it'am. That's the thing. So it'am is the important thing, uh, and that has to be done over, you know, a period of time. If you, if if you're going to give it to one person, the ten days are complete and ten pounds are given. Or can I, can or can like you give the price for five days and then have like break of two days and then again. Yeah, you can give it over that as well. The best thing to do is just to be on the safe side. You give it to 10 different people. That would be the best thing. So one day, so 10 days are complete. Yeah. I said, Fasid Ustad. I'm not sure if it came differently for you. Uh, Fasid. Yeah, Fasid is basically, according to Hanafis, Fasid is considered to be, um, it could be several things, but the main thing about Fasid is, is that if the if the the contract is considered to be missing one of the sharait, yeah, missing one of the osaf or the sharait of a of the aqad, of a bait. Uh, is it possible that we that we're seeing in France, for example, the ban of a baya hijab in school workplace, etc., could seen as a punishment for us as an ummah? Not necessarily, no. No, this is just a test from Allah. This is like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sahaba faced tests, bans and these kind of things. Prohibitions were put onto them or restrictions. Yeah, I would say it's generally just to, to be seen as that rather than a rather than a uh, a sin. Unless they are doing like explicit sins, widespread sin, there's certain types of sins that they openly everyone's doing. Then it's possible. But generally, these are these are just these are just uh, understand it as tests from Allah. Sorry for the silly question. I saw my cousin play a, w a World War II game in which he was playing as a German. The Soviets, German characters have the Iron Cross and uh, the Russians, communists. Is it problematic to play? No, it's fine. Between two khutbas, can we do dua in your heart? Yeah, you can do it in your heart, silently. Riyaz, ahla wa sahla, my brother Riyaz, wa alaikum as -salam. I hope you're well, my brother. Muhammad Hassan, wa alaikum as -salam. I am in Medina at the moment. I wanted to say, can I lead my wife in tahajjud in Hanafi fiqh? Yes, you can. No, it's fine. The Hanafis basically say, nafal jama'ah is makru if there's tada'i. If you're inviting, openly inviting people to it, like having a special announcement for it, and lots of people. But otherwise, it's fine. If it's like a one-off thing, then it's fine. I'm very well, my brother, Riaz. Um, how do you think we can resolve and do this babying from our mothers in the Asian community to be better husbands, good men? I think mothers, first of all, need to make their children more responsible. One of the best things that I think I probably found was when I started work when I was 16 years old, first time I had a job. I think that really helped me mature up. And uh, also, number two, is I, I traveled. I obviously left home for studies for nine years. And I think that living outside of home and having to fend for yourself, that really helps you a lot. Having to learn how to cook, having to learn how to interact with different types of people, paying your own bills. I think that is probably the main thing. Because the parents, the parents, when they shelter their children from, from things, they don't realize, they think they're protecting them. But they don't realize by sheltering your children from things, you're depriving them of learning essential skills for, for, for the world, mentally and physically. 
Request of the being steadfast in prayer and practice. Ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. Make dua for our brother Riyaz. So this question, if I buy a genie lamp from eBay like in them Arabian Nights firms and keep in my room as an ornament, is it okay? Yes, it's fine. <laughs> as long as you don't rub it. <laughs> I'm a joke. Do we have to pray missed prayers in order, i.e. if we miss Dhuhr Asr, can we catch up the Asr first? Yes. According to Hanafis, you should do that. Is it permissible to recite Quranic du'as when you're in major impurity? Uh, yes, you can. As long as they are with the intention of du'a, you're just reading as a du'a, there'd be permissibility for it. Although generally this is the rule that's used for the high woman, the money menstruation. But if it, if it is purely a du'a, and it's a, a du'a, then it's gentle. Like you can do tasbih and you can do... But ideally, a person should do ghusl, purify themselves. <coughs> uh, is it man to believe in the height of Adam alayhi salam? Is there a scope? Yeah. So what I would suggest there's a book called uh, The Height of Adam, which you can buy, it's in English, by Mufti Muntasir al-Zaman. And he's explained this whole concept in how to understand this hadith and the various interpretations of it. I can't remember where to put it. It's called, if you look, search up the height of Adam by Mufti Muntasir al-Zaman. Can we perform sajda tilawa during makru times? Uh, it's You should avoid it. Yeah, you should delay the sajda tilawa until after the makru time. Makru times meaning like the sunrise, sunset and zawal. Can the jinn shayatin hear our thoughts? No. Start, should I study the Hivs al-Rahman, Sari stories of the Prophet with a teacher? And you can read it on your own. So I have heard you mention Quduri a few times. What is this? And would you recommend someone considering joining Ayaz of the Scholars? Definitely. This is something where you're going to study in Ayaz of the Scholars. I've actually got a whole series on that. Uh, yeah, check that out. Yeah, check that one out. So it's a whole series on Quduri. You can watch it, inshallah. What if me and my wife pray every night to Hajjud in Jama'at? Yeah, that's fine. Was... That the waiter job you had, you got me. Yes, you remember, my bro. <laughs> remember that one. <laughs> tough job, you know. Tough job being a waiter. I tell you, you you gotta learn some special skills when you. <laughs> That's the one, bro. I'm surprised you remembered. Hey, I'm studying the Quran and I'm confused with ayat. Remember, Said used to like whales when you were very very small. And once in Broadway School, there was actually a book sale, and I went there and I found these books about whales. And I thought, you know, Saeed likes, so actually, they're really cheap, really like crazy cheap. So I just bought loads of these books and I gave them. And I, I don't know if you could read or not, but you like swales. Uh, here's right I'm studying the Quran. I'm confused with Ayah 105, Surah Baqarah. Can you please clarify this Ayah? Okay, so verse number 100. So I do not know the Quran by heart, so I will have to check what verse number 105 is. 105. Okay, verse 105. مَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ مِنْ خَيْرٍ مِنْ مَنْ يَخْتَصُ so basically, verse 105 in Surah Baqarah, what this is basically mentioning is, in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, when the Prophet, when the Prophet ﷺ, he came to Medina, what happened was there was already people in Medina who had already established their positions. So you had the Jews and Christians who had already had this long tradition of the divine, the divine religion that they were representing, the Bible and the Torah. And then you had the, the mushriks, the idol worshippers, who had culturally, they were considered to be the indigenous people of, of that area. So when the Prophet ﷺ now comes, and now he comes with this new message, that believe in one God, stop racism amongst yourselves, no one is better than anyone except in the sight of God, etc., etc., all that. There were many communities who found and became defensive, and they began to undermine him in any way they could. So you had the mushriks clearly who waged war against him, you had the Jews who, who, who made many absurd claims against him, that he's learning this from um, this information about the, our, our history from 
external sources or you know the Christians. Um, Christians also made objections as well when he criticized the Trinity. So Allah reminds the Prophet Sallallahu and says that those of the Ahl Kitab and Mushriks don't think that these people want good for you in your religion. Meaning, don't assume to yourself that these people are going to want you to excel in your religion. In fact, it's like a kind of, it's like almost like a, a tournament. These people are trying to, trying to preserve their religion and trying to push their religion as being the true, true religion. And you're, you're obviously on the mission to present the religion. So this is what this verse actually is referring to. kafaru. So those people who disbelieve from the Ahl Kitab, Christians and Jews, and the Mushriks, idol worshippers, they do not wish that any good comes to you from your Rabb, from your Lord. Allah, He specifies with His mercy, meaning Allah specifies with revelation, whoever He wants. He gave it to Moses at one point. He gave it to Jesus at one point. If He wants to give it to the Prophet Sallallahu then He can. Does that make sense? Stargan, I say, I have thoughts that I'll end up in hellfire. I'm not doing enough good acts and doing enough to get close to Allah. I'm trying my best. Alhamdulillah. Ignore the thoughts, Star. Try your best. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who forgives people for committing sins. As long as you know that Allah is the one that you're ultimately, you're, 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 the, the, he's your creator, and you submit yourself to him, then alhamdulillah, inshallah, Allah will protect you. This is the why we say faith is based upon the wings of of hope and the wings of fear. So you live your life fearing that you are going to disobey Allah, but at the same time having hope that if you ever did disobey Allah, that Allah would forgive you. I'm a reva and I'm afraid of going to the mosque. Um, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. If you are afraid of going to the mosque, what I would suggest is sometimes you just need maybe a good friend to accompany you to the mosque. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really strange that happens in mosques apart from sometimes maybe you might have some smelly shoes when you enter the mosque. Uh, some people have some smelly shoes or something, or I don't know, something else. But there would have been, there's, there's nothing, I've never seen anything strange happen in a mosque. Anything that would scare a person. So try to get someone who regularly goes to the mosque, befriend them, and then try to go with them, inshallah. I can read Arabic, but I can't read the Quran fluently. How can I get better reading Quran more fluent? Uh, what I would suggest is either get yourself a teacher if you can, to read to and they'll help you correct yourself or you can go online on youtube you can search for videos of how to read quran i've got a series it's called learn how to read the quran series you can check that out maybe that might be something that might help you maybe that might be something that you're not looking for um but that's basically i can bring it up for you Let's give you a link for it yeah this is a quite a popular quite a popular series Inshallah. Um, is this the one? No, that's not the one. Okay, this is the one. That's the one. <clears throat> um, sorry, so I didn't catch it. What actually is Kuduri? So check out, I've got a series on, if you go to my YouTube channel, it's a series. It's basically a manual text for Hanafi Fiqh. It's one of the earliest texts that I studied. Uh, it goes through all the chapters of fiqh. Do, does the wali need to be listening to the conversations or can they just be in the house, etc.? Uh, so they just need to be present around them. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Be ma'ana wa sahlan. Yes, you remember, Sayyid. You remember. Arabic with Sahel. In Surah Yusuf, when the man is describing his dream to Hazrat Yusuf, he says, Arani, which is present tense. However, we translate it as past and weather. So in the Arani, I can see myself. Like in my dream, I can see, you know when you tell people, I saw a dream last night and I can see myself doing this. So it's just the way the Arabs Arabs say say things. Daniel, ahla wa sahlan, ahla wa sahlan. 
slave of Allah. So the other thing is, you know, Arabic translations. It's very important to actually, you know, when people study Quran. I'm actually putting this up on my uh, on my Patreon. So my Patreon uh, weekly, I put up a, a tafsir I go through of Surah Maida, and I go through how to translate as well. So tr- and learning how to translate is a very important skill. And if you look at translations, you will see that some of the translations will translate it as past and some as present. This is a skill that you have to learn when you're when you're learning Quran. The skill of translation. Slave of Allah, so what is the outcome of the Alimiya program? The outcome of the Alimiya program is supposed to be, this is a good question, this is, let me answer this question. The outcome of the Alimiya program, for those who don't know who the Alimiya program is, it's basically the program that you study to become a scholar in Islam. So the program, the outcome should be this, that you know the Arabic language solid inside out and you can access all of the earliest sources of Islam without having to rely upon anyone. That's basically what you want. You want that you want to be an independent researcher. You want to have all the skills to do independent research of the earliest sources of Islam. That requires you to study Arabic solid, requires you to train yourself in fiqh, train yourself in tafsir, train yourself in hadith, train yourself in aqidah. So you get trained by experts. At the end of it, you come out and you should be able to teach uh, any person these sciences to get them to that level. That's basically what the alim is. Receive the question, growing up, they were taught if you miss the rawi, then your fast don't count. When they miss the rawi, they wouldn't bother fasting the following day or break it. What can they do now to make it up? So now just work out how many they've missed and they should do qadha. Yeah, so work out how many they missed and they do qadha of those. Quranic insights, guys. Guys, those of you guys who want to learn how to read the Quran, Quranic Insights is a very good organization. Mashallah, my friend, Hafiz Abdul Haysalu. You guys might see him on social media. Uh, so check him out, inshallah. They have, for, especially for people who are learning from scratch and reverts, excellent resources. So make sure you check out Quranic Insights. Okay, this is it, Quranic Insights. Make sure you guys check out Quranic Insights. And if you know anyone that wants to learn Quran, these are very good. These guys will help you, inshallah. And give my name as well. Give my uh, what's it? Uh, special code. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Mullah, ahla wa sallam. M Mullah, wa alaikum salam. Yes, my brother, we're having a very cold and splendid, splendid weekend. Usually snows first in Blackburn, isn't it? When rinsing the nose from a nosebleed, do we have to wash the face wherever the water went? No, you don't have to. I have not seen a casket be lowered into the grave. Is it rewarded, rewarding for men present to place some dirt? No, there's no specific reward. It's just like a, it's just like something which, it's just like a, like some sort of a symbolic thing. That's all it is. There's no special reward in throwing the sand on there. Does a cemetery worker oversee the process interfere during it? Uh, I I probably might sometimes. Sometimes the family don't because of this type of ground or the rules of the cemetery. They have to allow the the workers to to fill the grave. What's the meaning of this verse? So the meaning of this verse basically is Allah is saying to the Prophet Sallam that either we will show you some of what we are promising that's going to happen to the Quraysh, or we're going to give you death. And then, you know, whatever was promised is going to happen after you. Meaning the Prophet ﷺ is being taught, do not wait for the results. The results are going to come. Either the results will come in your lifetime or the results will come after you pass away. So it's a good, the, the lesson that we learned from this, one of the lessons we learned from this verse is, is that Muslims should not wait for results. You should just do your work, do as, work hard and then not wait for the results. So do you mind going into a bit more detail about the chaperone and marriage conversation? Let's say in a restaurant, must they be at a table with them? Yes. So they should be. And basically, the idea is that the man and woman should not be left alone in such a way that they could end up in a haram relationship. The idea of the chaperone is there so that the conversation stays pure. So they don't start talking about other things that are inappropriate. Wa alaikum as-salam. Ahla wa sahlan. Lem au. Hope you're well. 
Muhammad Hassan or I didn't know the Trinity existing so long. Yes, it's in the Quran. That's why it's important, guys, to read the Quran. Honestly, read the Quran. You know, Muslims should know what's in the Quran at least. Yeah, read the Quran regularly. Because once you read what if you read what the Quran says, you will be so surprised, shocked. Yeah, it's so simple to understand the Quran is. And it's so powerful. The message is very, very powerful. It gives you confidence as well in your religion. Zahlah clarifying, you're welcome. You're welcome. Here, here's Ryan. If I have face dryness or eczema and water makes it worse, especially during wudu, how do I do wudu? Uh, if you find it difficult to wash your face, you can skip your face. What's your top three tips on going Umrah? Practical tips like wearing a belt. Um, I would say for men, generally, make yourself, you get yourself an ihram, ihram that you're comfortable in. Number two is get yourself a belt, a money belt, right, to hold the, everything together. And keep your money to, to with you, like in your in your man bag or whatever. Keep your money with you. Um, and um, make sure you practice how to wear and move around in the ihram before you actually, you know, go to, to Saudi. Otherwise, you might accidentally kind of you know, do some maneuvers that expose certain parts of your body. And I've seen that happen, unfortunately. So you want to be careful in that. Uh, make sure you know that you, you want to spend over there when you go for Umrah. Make sure you know that you want to spend as much time as you can in the, the Haram itself. You want to spend as much time there as you can. So learn what you have to do there as well. Like for example, how, do you, how are you going to do your Umrah? How are you going to do sa'i, tawaf, sa'i, shaving of the head? And then outside of that time, what else can you do in the Masjid al-Haram? Like read Quran, you know, listen to a dars, a lesson. Um, yeah, stuff like that. How can we ensure our intentions are correct in what we're doing? We may tell ourselves that we are doing something for one reason, but deep down, yeah. So in sincerity, intention is the hardest thing, I would say, for trying to get yourself you know, correct, because intention requires testing all of your emotions. This is why the ulama would say the hardest thing we found um, in our lives was correcting our intention. So as long as you're always focusing on my intention should always be for a good reason. As long as it's a good reason, then it's fine. But it's a long, lifelong mission, inshallah. Fahmida wa alaykum salam ahla wa I had a question about the name of Ibn Hajar, the reason behind his name the son of stone um i'm not sure you know i can't remember i mean i remember a long time ago reading about it but i'm not sure about the reason why he was called ibn hajar i think that it's part of his let me have a check one of the things i think is important for you know in madrasas for students of knowledge um is that they that they learn about the biographies of scholars? Very important that they either have a lesson where they study biographies of scholars, or they have some sort of a they have some sort of a like a, a reading list that they should do in order to understand it. Okay, uh, right. His name was Ahmad ibn Ali ibn Muhammad ibn Muhammad. Okay, ibn Hajar is one of his forefathers. Yeah. Ibn Hajar is one of his forefathers. So one of his forefathers was called Ibn Hajar. Like, you know, sometimes a scholar might be called by his granddad or his great-granddad or great-great-granddad. They sometimes used to do that before. Like Ibn Taymiyyah is not his, that's not his name. Taymiyyah was not his father. His name is Ahmad bin Abdul Rahim bin Abdul Salam. Yeah, so Ibn Taymiyyah is not in there. It's just a nickname that he was given. Have we been given an actual reason behind why pork is haram? No. Yeah, it's Amr Ta'abudi. We have no, this is part of submission to Allah. We submit to Allah and we accept Allah. In Salah, should I put my hands on my chest or my stomach? I have come across hadith that say my, my chest. Uh, so there is no authentic narration of where you should put your hands. No authentic narration. The only authentic narration that exists is that you fold your, your hands. Uh, so this is why the Hanafi say it's more preferred to have it low. This is what they saw in in Kufa that people have their hands going to Hanafis and the Hanbalis. You have your hands below the navel. That's the more preferred position. 
If you had it above, then the salat would be valid. Ustad, we are all pro were all prophets Middle Eastern. No, prophets came to every tribe. Allah says in the Quran, prophets were sent to every tribe. Majority of the ones that we read in the Quran are based around that area. Bounce of you, what is the ruling on psychedelic substances? Impermissible. Sharif, wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan, zob. Why is the word nukadhibu? Ya laytana nuraddu wa la nukadhibu. Bi ayati rabbina. Mansub here. Um, ya laytana nuraddu wa la nukadhibu bi ayati rabbina. Okay, one second, I have to check this. I can't remember from the top of my head. وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذْ وُقِفُوا عَلَى النَّارِ فَقَالُوا يَا لَيْتَنَا نُرَدُّ وَلَا نُكَذِّبُ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّنَا Okay, so نُكَذِّبَ وَلَا نُكَذِّبَ Okay. Okay, so he says, Okay, there's a long discussion about this. I'll try to find a short answer for it. Short answer. Okay, so there's actually two qiraats in this. Nuraddu wala nukadhibu. And there's nusbuhuma fi jawab al tamanni. And there's a second qira'a which is both of them are nasab. Nuradda wala nukadhiba. And there's a third qira'a, raf ul awwal wa nusbu al thani wa jawab al lower right. Okay, so there's three qira'ats there. Hmm. Okay, I'm not going to rough. I'm not going to ojo. Okay, there's actually three reasons why it could be rougher. Uh, okay, that's going to take a bit of time to go through. Jadwal. Give me a second, guys. Yeah, so some say this wow is ma'iya, bi'an mudmur jud wal master ma'awul ma'atuf al master laytan al raddu wa intifa' tikrib ma'a intifa' tikrib. So this is wow is ma'a, yeah, maful ma'ahu. So it's bita'wili master. That's one of the explanations. Anyway, I think I should make a video on this. It's a good example. Hope that helps. If I miss a couple, so a short answer is wa ma'iyya, and uh, others have different explanation. If I miss a couple of months of A's of the scholars' course, do you think it's possible to catch up before January exams as I am also due to fly out mid then again and run a busy, a busy business. Uh, you know, it just all depends how you're finding the course. If you are struggling with the course now, it's pointless then. Maybe rejoin. That's from my experience. Um, so it's up to you. If, you. if you think that you're on everything, you can easily catch up. Everything's making sense to you. And you're caught up with all the homeworks, then it's fine. Otherwise, I would say just repeat. Otherwise, you're just going to be struggling too much. Especially if you've got a busy business. So is the translation in the present more accurate or past? Also, can present indicate that he is constantly seeing the dream again? No, no, not constantly seeing. That wouldn't be right. Yeah, so this is again, uh, I can see. So it's just the way the Arabs say when they when they report a dream. I, I can see. Your background likes look like you're captain of the starship. Yeah, look at that. Captain of the starship, Liakat. Captain Liakat. Your background lights. Zakallah uh, khair for the plug. You're welcome. Ahlan wa sallam. Courses are free. Next one in January. So guys, check this out, yeah? 
Quranic insights. If you know anyone who wants to learn Quran properly, then please check this, this these guys out. Check does Mufti Faraz Adam teach anywhere? Uh, he teaches in Leicester, from what I know. They've got a Darul Iftade, and they teach there. But generally, he does a lot of um, consultancy work. And he travels around the world a lot. He sometimes gives consultancy for for countries. The countries call him Muslim countries to help with zakat problems. Are there some examples of shirk you could provide? Is it just prostrating to a god? So shirk is basically belief. Associating anything that is uniquely for Allah to someone other than Allah. Okay, I'm going to go off Instagram. So associating with Allah something which is unique to Allah. For example, like if a person believed that there's an idol that has the same power that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has. Yeah. Uh, so this is... Basically, what shirk boils down to is when you make give someone the power that Allah uh, Allah has. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, so it does uh, so like for example, believing that an idol has the power to do what Allah does. Yeah, believing for example, like the idol. Can give you rizq. Believing the idol can forgive your sins. The believing the idol can put you in jannah. That's all shirk does. And then, or believing that there's some entity out there that has the same knowledge as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Um, yeah. So these are these are examples of shirk. PDF. Assalamualaikum. Assalam. PDF. Are uh, IUD consciousness allowed? It's placed inside a woman and kills sperms before they reach the egg. Her husband isn't happy about it, but it's the only doing it to keep happy what if the husband isn't happy about you so i don't understand if the husband's not happy and you keep still doing it that doesn't make sense so generally any contraception that requires the exposure of the private parts uh, is not allowed because you have to expose for an unnecessary reason you have to expose on you're only allowed to expose your private parts to another individual if it's like a dire need it's very, very serious, like a medical condition or something like that. So in this case, it's wooden. There's, there's other means of contraception that a woman can use. Um, so again, I don't understand that if he's not happy about it, but it's the only thing keeping to keep happy. I don't understand that. I'm not, I'm not too sure I've understood the question properly then. But then practically speaking, it becomes very embarrassing, especially for a woman to talk about marriage and ask your potential question in front of your father or brother. Yeah. Have you read uh, Dr. Fadl Samurai's books? Very good. I would say start off from something easy, like start off with um, uh, uh, Kalim al-Arabiya. Kalim al-Arabiya is a very nice book. Or you can start off with um, something like an easy Nahu book. I think his son... Muhammad Fadl Samurai also has written some books as well. And some of, you know, his, uh, um, his, Lamasat uh, al Bayaniya. So if someone's got his YouTube, those recordings of his, and they're put into a book form. Lamasat Bayaniya. And there's another book called Tariq al Wusul. It's two parts. And he goes through some, some surahs of the Quran and he explains it in a, in a Balagha way. That's very good. And a boy sit in a room where they can be seen by others, but they are not listening to the conversation will be better. Okay, yeah, that again, that, that sounds like a, you know, maybe in a public environment, sitting in a public environment where someone's sitting on a table slightly away from them. My older sister says, why does Allah not get rid of evil and help the innocent people who are suffering? She said, Allah is not a merciful God. This shocked me and I didn't know what to say. So good question this is. So this is the concept of evil. What I would suggest is, if you really are interested in this, there's actually a there's actually a video by uh, by Safa, Saf, Safaruk Chowdhury, uh, the problem of evil. Yeah, very good. The problem of evil. Uh, the problem of evil. So Muhammad Hijab also has a video on it as well. Yeah, so this is a very good the problem of evil. Check this out. Uh, and there's also another one. 
called Mm, can't seem to find now. Yeah, this is a good one as well. This is a shorter version by Sheikh Hamza Karamadi. Problem of evil. So check these out. This should be enough for you, inshallah. I just found your channel and well, I'm impressed. Jazakallah khair, Ruh. May Allah bless you. Thank you very much. In the Quran, chapter 5, verse 116, it mentions the Trinity, but mentions Mary as part of this. I thought she wasn't part of the Trinity, but rather Isa's mother. So there's different types of Trinities. So, so if you look at the history of Trinity, you'll find that this was one of the, yeah, one of the Trinities. I would like to know if it is. Um, I would like to know if it is reprehensible if I study in a library building, not in the building with my university musalla, knowing I will miss congregation because it takes time. Inshallah, I should be allowed, as long as you pray your salat on time. Does the hadith of Tamim Dari conflict with other hadith on the Jal? If so, I don't. in what way? In what way? Some people in Medina have their hands down. What fiqh is that? That is the the Maliki fiqh. I want to ask if they're Shia, but Shias, or there's many Shias in Medina as well. So maybe it's Shia. Why is Shirk such a terrible sin? I resonate a lot with why murder. So you see, look, the thing you have to understand is, like if you look at what's happening in Gaza, why are they dehumanizing uh, the killing of children and innocent so easily? It's belief, isn't it? If the belief is not based upon something which is which is sound it's not something which has come from god then it's easy for someone to to dehumanize anyone so dehumanization can be done by religious people meaning like jews christians muslims human even muslims can dehumanize people by distorting the meanings of their texts and the second is done by shirk so people of shirk generally de then the, the the natural default state of shirk is to dehumanize people that's why if you look in places wherever shirk takes place around the world, you will always see racism, caste system. You will always see uh, venerating people, a certain type of people, and uh, belittling others. You'll always see that. So this is why shirk's problems, it's like its tentacles are just spread in so many facets of life. So that's why the shirk is so dangerous. It is, it's, you know, atheism is actually shirk in reality. That's what it is. It's where you attribute God's attributes to something other than God. And atheism has resulted in so much crimes around the world in the past 100, 200 years. You're welcome, Zob. Uh, AQ, Assalamu alaikum, Assalam. I hope you're well. Very good. Thank you very much. Hope you're well. Uh, you mentioned different Qira'ats in previous question. What are they? Again, check out Sapiens Institute on Qira'at and Ahruf. <coughs> Uh, currently 4 a.m. Ahla wa sahlan, mashallah, mashallah, ahead of us. Salam alaikum, MU. I don't hear the namaz azan from my home, praying home with my child. Would I get the reward of congregation namaz? Is this acceptable? So if if, it's, if you have a valid excuse, then inshallah, you would get uh, hopefully a reward if your intention was to go, but you simply were un unable to. But if your intention was not to go, then you don't get the reward. So use of present is specific to ver dream. And the, so it's not just dreaming. There's many things the Arabs, they use a present verb for. Sometimes re relating a story. They might like relate the story in a way which is considered to be as though it's happening now. <coughs> Why is shirk and idol worship constantly mentioned in the Quran? Is that still relevant? Yes, of course. Big time. So shirk does not necessarily mean 
like I said, atheism is a, is a, is a type of shirk. Attributing powers other than Allah. So you have to understand the dynamics of how serious false belief is. How serious. And if you look historically, the impact false belief has actually had on mankind. Like at the moment, atheism, secularism is though it's it's literally just destroying people because through secularism, you know, people are developing ways of c- killing people basically through bombs, like these crazy bombs that are indiscriminately killing innocent children and, and babies, and and it's all being legitimized in the name of um, democracy or in the name of I don't know their own <coughs> version of justice. I saw a brother in the mosque prostrating and showing his back. I did not tell him as I was worried, not come back. Should I have told him? If you feel as though he would have taken your advice, then yes. If you feel he's not going to take your advice, then you leave him. Why is the ruling of niqab in the Hanafi madhab in front of Muslims, disbelievers in times of fitna? If it is such, if the, so the niqab, the Hanafis, you know the, the original ruling in the Hanafis is the woman does not have to cover her face. Um, and this is usually mentioned in regards to Salat, and that's because that's how she presents herself outside. Um, but if there is a situation where a woman regularly showing her face in front of others is going to lead to her being molested, harmed, or anything of that nature, or causing men to try and attack her, then for her to cover her face is considered to be either very important, or in some situations might even be necessary as well for her to, to cover her face. Yeah, that's... That's that's what it would mean. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan, Masid Ali. Kayf al hal, ya akhi al habib. Dissab, jazakallah khair for the reading books. I want to know what my approach to studying with those should be. Should I take a dictionary and misfa to memorize? No, do you don't need to memorize. What I would suggest is try to read as much as you can Arabic stories. People underestimate how important it is to actually read Arabic stories. Arabic stories are fundamental yeah <clears throat> you're like mental some mentals are good so <laughs> fundamental as good yeah so read as much arabic as you can exhaust yourself and uh, read as many anything arabic you come across just try to read it try to figure out what's what it's saying what is meant in the hadith what separates a believer from disbeliever is salah if i miss it so basically what the hadith means is that a person the sign of a believer is praying salat and therefore, a person who leaves praying Salat, it's as though he has inside of himself the traits of a disbeliever. So he's not a disbeliever. This is like, you know, like someone says, this guy's not a Muslim. Man. Look what he's doing. He's not a Muslim. They don't mean he's not a Muslim as in he's out of Islam. They mean by that, that he's not considered to be doing the things Muslim do. If someone's praying in a wrong direction, can we inform them while they are praying? Where the, Yes, you can. So either you tell them <coughs> verbally and they look at you and then they turn that direction or you can, if they're obviously, if it's possible to, to move them physically. Um, so, according, would it be considered responding to something externally? No, it wouldn't be. Asif Ali, alaykum as Do you have video lessons regarding logic and other manadhara and hadith sciences? Uh, if not, could you please record some students, inshallah. I have on my uruk.com, I have some mantik. I did a few lessons of mantik, then I stopped. Uh, if you want usul hadith, then I have a whole series, 22 lessons of usul hadith for beginners. Uh, if you email, email should be the bottom coming up soon. So you can email there, and inshallah, um, you get access to it, to the usul hadith. Wa iyaakum asif ali, may Allah bless you, make dua for us. Or some part of their aura is exposed. Should we inform them while praying? Try to cover it up, e.g., a female's ponytail. This was yet. Yeah. No, no. In that case, that's going to become confusing to them. Um, just leave them, and at the end of the salat, maybe tell them. If they were unaware of it, <clears throat> then it's fine. Then, if they were aware of it, then you know, they depending on what madhab they follow, will affect their salat. So it all depends. Again, what I would say, do not worry about other people's salat too much. Because sometimes what happens is they might be following a madhab which has much more of a leniency in certain issues. Um, in fiqh, actively and passively, listening is differentiated. Uh, what about watching a documentary or modest film which has background music? Would it be allowed because it's passive listening? Uh, there may be scope for that. Yeah, that's what they're saying. There may be scope for that. 
So, um, I mean, obviously it's difficult to say because there's so many different types of of films out there and music out there. Have you ever experienced a near-death wake-up call? No, I haven't, alhamdulillah. How do scholars get these specifics? 42 miles, 52 miles, 10 cubits. Yeah, there's evidence. So that's why you have to study fic to understand this. I mean, I can't explain it in two minutes. But yeah, there's definitely evidence for it. It's all measurements that came from the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. And then it's converted into today's standards. MashaAllah, Gulbi. Zakhallah khair, Nilofar. May Allah bless you. Wa alaykum as salam. Aloh. Ahla wa sahlan. Hope you're well. Didn't get to meet you yesterday after Juma. Oh, yeah, I didn't see you. Yeah, hope you're well. I miss my tea, bro. I miss that tea you promised me. I feel like atheism is the root of all evil. Satanism, atheism has massively ruined the world. I feel atheism has grown. It's, yeah, definitely. I mean, I would definitely encourage anyone who is into understanding about these new isms in the world. Check out Muhammad Hijab's series, A London Year. It's a poem. Muhammad Hijab had a near-death experience. So after, you know, a few years ago. And then when he got out of it, alhamdulillah, he decided that he needed to write something for the, the, the lay people in the world to help them understand all these isms, all these different feminism and all these different types. And it's really good. I mean, I benefit a lot from it. I went through nearly all of it. It's very good. Definitely recommend it. Do you read Surah Fatiha behind the Imam in loud salahs? No, not Hanafis. Stance of Khuruj in Hanafi Madhab. Allah knows best, bro. So I should just read the books using a dictionary and just slowly over time a natural understanding. Yeah, but you have to read a lot. That's the thing. Read as force yourself like no pain. You gotta feel pain. <laughs> My father is not in contact with our family and hasn't been due to a separation 10 years ago. What should be done in terms of a wali for my sisters, Brandon? Uh, so you can be the wali. Yeah? You can be the wali for your sisters. Your grandparents can be the wali. Yeah, that would be fine. Uh, all the questions have been answered. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Um, okay, I think someone asked a question over here. Please explain why our family, the Prophet and Sayyids, highly praised. Aren't all Muslims equal? Yes, they're all equal. All Muslims are equal. Even the lineage of the Prophet are equal to all Muslims. The only thing is we have to show them a bit more respect. A bit more respect for the Prophet It does not mean that they can get away with things. That they can do things and get away with them. Or their sins are less than ours or anything of that nature. So they don't have any special title. The special titles... It's just that they are from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that's all. I think Asians go a bit over the top in this. Yeah, Asians go a bit over the top. Um, and, you know, some Arabs go a bit over the top as well. But generally, there is no difference between someone from the lineage of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and an average person. If that was the case, then, you know, it would have been something clearly seen throughout history, throughout the uh, days of Sahaba as well. But clearly, we have love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam family, without a doubt. Meaning the the initial Prophet and family without a doubt. And then as a secondary, we love the lineage of the Prophet because they attribute to the Prophet. But it doesn't mean, for example, like they have some special status, they get some special place in the mosque to stand where no one else can stand. And no. Um Where can we find these books after finishing your collection? <coughs> so there's actually, let me show you guys. <coughs> Arabic books. Copy ink. So here they are. Arabic books. Find them there, inshallah. You're welcome, Amr. AQ start. I spend the evening out with friends, left house with wudu. I let Asr Isha <coughs> noise after Maghrib and after eating. I did fresh wudu for Isha, only wudu, not istinja. When I came back home, I finally asked something which invalidate my wudu. What do I do? I don't know when that occurred. Ignore it. <coughs> if you don't know when it occurred, ignore. Start honestly. I have ever told you I love you, bro. You know that, bro. Bro, bro, man, <laughs> you make it so easy to ask questions. You're welcome, my brother. 
mashallah you know this is something that i wish i had access to scholars when i was growing up and i could ask them questions and feel comfortable as well <clears throat> and not feel it and not feel judged i think the main thing is you should be able to ask scholars questions without feeling judged or without feeling you know uh, intimidated in going up to them Zagallah khair, by showing the extra respect is it necessary no i mean it's not necessary you won't be considered sinful or anything <clears throat> exactly so human nature the way it is many would just think themselves above and that's the problem unfortunately i, I know in pakistan there's people who claim they're from the says and they, they they abuse other people they take advantage of this and they get so much uh, special treatment they expect that special treatment which is wrong be good how would you spend your summers during summers when you did alim class <clears throat> so um we didn't have summer holidays. The, the calendar basically works around Ramadan. So Ramadan was off. So <clears throat> it was basically classes ended about two or three weeks before Ramadan. And they started a week or two after Ramadan. So that was our holiday. So because it used to shift in the year, there was different times. So when Ramadan comes, you know, sometimes I would come back to the UK. And sometimes I would stay there and study. Study extra on the side. So why do people say Ahmadis aren't Muslim? They seem to have Shahada. Yeah, they seem to have Shahada. But the problem is, is that they believe in beliefs which are contrary to Islam. So if someone believes in everything in Islam, but they say, but I don't believe Isa is the Prophet of Allah. They're out of Islam. They're not Muslim. Because Islam is just a perfect package. You can't eliminate anything from Islam. It's like a perfect jigsaw puzzle. If you take out and, and take out one jigsaw piece and say, I don't believe in this, you're not Muslim. You, you basically, you can't identify as a Muslim according to how you want. Does that make sense? You have to believe in everything. It's just a perfect system Allah has. So Ahmadiyyas believe that <clears throat> after the Prophet Sallallahu there was another Prophet. In essence, that's what they believe. You can actually find the whole articles and whole videos explaining the historic belief of the... Uh, there's a guy called... Uh, <clears throat> Ustad Rashid, I forgot his other name, man. Uh, Adnan Rashid, Adnan Rashid, Ustad Adnan Rashid, check him out on YouTube. He does a thorough explanation of this. AQ Ustad, could you explain how a man, we as a man, we can be good at our relatives without pushing the boundaries of Allah when it comes to our female relatives? So I would say, look, this a lot of this is common sense, this is. You... You, you're supposed to be good to other people Irrespective of whether you're family Or whether they're male or female You're supposed to be good to other people as a Muslim And when it comes to your family Because they're your close family And because they know intimate things about you There's greater chance of there being friction between you right? The more you know someone The more chance there is that You're going to have some friction between you So with your families You have to be super cautious And be ready to easily forgive That's the problem the less interaction you have with people, like for example, you guys have little interaction with me once a week or something, and I don't know many of you personally that well. So therefore, the the kind of the way our, our our interaction is going to be very professional or professional to a degree, and that's why we'll be careful of what we say to each other, and we'll be careful of how we interact with each other. So we won't really kind of end up hurting each other's feelings. We only end up hurting each other's feelings if we start. Interacting more on a, on a on a on a more daily basis or a regular basis, and that's where you the more you interact with your relatives, because you're going to be with them for the rest of your life. They, they've got your back basically, or they should do. Then you should be ready to forgive them, over over overlook their their, their mistakes that they they've done to you. Does that make sense? Uh, pushing the boundaries of Allah. So again, things like if your relatives. Um, things like shaking hands with your female relatives, cousins, and these kind of things, then you don't do that. Or, for example, like um, um, hugging, these kind of things. If they refuse to wear a scarf, then in that kind of situation, what do you do? Do you not look at them? So I would say there would be leniency in that situation. What is the application of the Bukhari hadith and the inter intercession where anyone who says La ilaha illallah will be taken out? Can I get my friends to say it once without? No, no, don't do that. That's like a scam that is. That's like, <laughs> that's like just like kind of saying, uh, I don't know, uh, say you married me. Say you married me. 
yeah, and then like kind of scamming them into marriage. Iman saying La ilaha illa has to be from the heart sincerely. In one version of the hadith, he says it has to be sincere. Do you think people focus too much on the small details of tradition rather than the bigger picture? Being a good person, definitely. And this is exactly what Allah talks about in the Quran as well. And the Prophet mentioned. The Prophet said in the hadith, he said to the Sahaba, What is a Muslim? And the Sahaba said, What do you mean, what is a Muslim? Isn't a Muslim someone who submits to Allah? He said, No, a Muslim, man salim al Muslimuna min lisani wa yadi. Where other Muslims are protected from this guy's tongue and his 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 actions. As in sometimes you forget what Islam is about. You become so fixated in doing actions and doing this and getting it right perfect and all the details that you don't realize having good character, treating other people as human beings, treating them in a good way is actually part of Islam. And that's something which people who don't practice generally pick up on those things. People who don't practice, they're not going to pick up on, did you do Sajda Sahu correctly? Did you pronounce this letter in the Quran correctly? Did you do this correctly? What they're going to be looking at is, how did they treat me? Um, so one of my Quran teachers uh, teaches a mixed class with males on one side and females on the other. When the female asks the questions, he doesn't look at them when responding. Is this correct? That's fine. That would be a more cautious way. What are the what are the Tazkirul Quran and Tafsir bin Kathir? I don't know what Tazkirul Quran is, but Tafsir bin Kathir is a is a Quran explanation by a scholar uh, that came about five, six, seven hundred years ago. Abrar Sheer Ahla wa salaikum as salam. Are you going to resume Qatar Nada course on Uruk or caught up? Uh, I'm going to try to make one. I mean, I'll be quite busy. I'm going to hopefully try to make one in the coming weeks. I'll try to make a few in the coming weeks, inshallah. I would tell them first about who is Allah and whether or whether they find Allah as they would say. So, so it's not as simple as that, my brother. So you have to explain to them, are you ready to accept Islam as your religion? Yeah, you have to you have to explain that. Otherwise, if it was that easy, you could just make everyone on social media say, "Can everyone repeat this after me?" <laughs> and then, so you have to explain about what about Allah and about the Prophet sallam and whether they accept them and they and they accept uh, religion as being truthful from Allah subhanahu wa taala. What I would suggest is, you know, Aira, go to I E R A. They have good workshops on how to give da'wah. Really good workshops. Did you watch Sheikh Bilal Asad's interview with Noam Ali Khan? It was really interesting. Uh, no, I didn't watch it. Unfortunately, I didn't watch it. What was he about? All right, guys. I'm going to finish there. Jazakumullah khair. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan wa sahlan. Jazakumullah khair. I will see you guys next time. Hope you guys have a fantastic week. Stay wrapped up, those of you guys who are in the UK. May Allah protect all of you guys, keep you guys safe, make dua, special dua for our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah bless all of them with barakah and khair and, and hifz, protection, and save them from the Zionist regime. And remember, don't stop speaking up for Palestinians wherever they are. Gazans, uh, or you know, harmful people who are doing harmful things. Because ultimately, you know, as a Muslim, one day when it, when it hits us, we're going to want other people to speak up for us as well. And as a Muslim, this is part of our religion, to speak up against bad things that are happening. And so in whatever capacity we have, may Allah give us a tawfiq. Being good to people you interact with regularly is easier because you can bite your tongue and say, the real test is at home, yet yeah, no one outside will know this. Yeah, definitely. It's very hard. I mean, and that's why you know, people don't realize, a lot of practicing people that I've seen have very bad manners with their family members and relatives like unfortunately i've seen this they'll be very good on the outside but when it comes to with family members how they deal with inheritance how they deal with um, treating their parents how they deal with even like common courtesy things like they'll be very very poor in that and parents unfortunately will have that with their children parents might be five times namazis praying five times salat going to the mosque but then when they're with their kids and things they treat them, they don't even treat them like, you know, how we learn about uh, treating other Muslims. This is also wrong as well. I mean, Zakallah khair, Limo. Zakallah khair, Ama. May Allah bless you. Riyaz, Zakallah khair. I'll see you guys next time. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.